By the early 20th century, all around America, cities are bursting to the seams and people look to expand in a new direction. Up. But building these great towers demands a critical ingredient that's much too expensive. Steel. One man will change all that. And with it, the face of America. New York is a playground for the super-rich industrialists and financiers. Wildly extravagant, they smoke cigars rolled in hundred-dollar bills. Their wives' hats studded with diamonds. Land values are the highest in the world. There's only one place to go. Up. By 1902, 65 skyscrapers are being constructed in Manhattan. This is one of them. It's called Walking the Steel. This man is 30 stories above the street. His first time at this height. No harness or safety rope. One slip and he's dead. Veterans are called fixers. The novices are snakes, because working with them can be deadly. The old hands know just how dangerous it can be. The thing I hate worse than poison is to take on a new man when we're near the top. They all get used to it or get killed. No hard hats. Just an 85-meter drop. They're up here eight hours a day. Meals when they can. No toilet breaks. They're called roughnecks. European immigrants and Mohawk Indians. Many were sailors and bridge workers, so they're used to heights. The guy's balancing on the beams. I think it took a lot of bravery. I think it took a lot of skill, a lot of you know, physically, um, physically challenging, but I also think it you had to be a little crazy. The stakes couldn't be higher. It's a risk they're willing to take. The pay is $4 a day, twice the going rate for manual labor. Foreman William Starrett sums up this dangerous job. Building skyscrapers is the nearest peacetime equivalent of war. Even to the occasional grim reality of an accident where a maimed body, even death, remind us that we are fighting a war of construction against the forces of nature. He makes it. Many aren't so lucky. Two roughnecks out of five die or are disabled on the job. Whether it's a builder or an architect or whatever, whoever had the imagination to design and build some of the great structures of New York, I'm inspired by. In 1902, in New York, this is what the future looks like. The Flat Iron Building, its triangular footprint determined by the junction of three streets. The steel frame means the outside can be hung in sections, like a suit of clothes. Now the walls don't take the weight, the steel does. It's so radical, when people first see it, they think it will blow over and kill them. Legal action is taken claiming winds focused by the flat iron's extreme shape damaged a nearby shop. 
Today, it's one of America's best loved buildings. Inside, the other breakthrough that lets towers rise into the clouds. The lift. Before it, the tallest building stopped mostly at five floors. No more walking upstairs now, so the sky is the limit. For the first time, the higher the floor, the higher the rent. Well, you'd think it's a fairly humble invention, but uh, when Otis invented the first really safe elevator, it enabled the growth of the modern city where people could come in, build much taller buildings, get a much higher density of people. And sure enough, by the end of the 19th century, America's urban population has increased 87 times over. In Chicago alone, in just 10 years, they build 50 steel frame buildings. And in 20 years, its population more than doubles to almost 1.7 million. 